you guys, what's up? It's me, Catherine, and today we're going to discuss one of my favorite hobbies, crying in front of strangers. No, but seriously, we're going to be talking about crying on cue, crying on camera, crying on stage, all that good stuff, some tips, some things I've learned, some advice, fun, fun crying things. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. My name's Catherine Steele, and I put out a new theater-related video on every... <laughs> Theater Thursday, plus I do bonus uploads throughout the week, so if you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe. That way you get notified for all future videos and you get to join the Theater Thursday fam. First we take over Broadway, and then the world. You can follow me at Kath underscore Steel on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram, but without any further ado, let's talk about crying. When actors ask me how to cry on cue, it's something that I always have kind of a love-hate relationship with. It can be really exciting when you get to that place emotionally that you understand how to make that happen, but it's also like a weird trophy that people kind of hold in esteem of like, oh wow, she cried real tears, that's incredible. And to me, I don't know how I feel about it. Personally, as an audience member, and what a lot of audience members feel is that the tension, the build up to the crying is where I feel for you. If you start crying, I don't really care. What really touches me as an audience member is watching you trying to fight back those tears, trying not to cry. That's a personal preference, but I thought I'd share. I also understand that sometimes in the script it says this character starts crying or another character will say to that character, hey, you're crying. And it needs to happen in front of a camera crew at a specific time on a specific day. Or it needs to happen seven times a week on stage. My absolute number one biggest tip when it comes to crying during acting is to not force it. If you're not there emotionally, if you're not there mentally, but you still just wanna push it out physically, it looks really weird and it'll read really fake. Sometimes the tears come and sometimes they don't. If you're in a situation where the tears aren't coming naturally, don't force it. I think you'll have a better performance if you get to the point where you're able to get without producing the physical tears than trying to forcefully manufacture something that isn't there. Forced tears will look worse than not crying at all. That being said, if you're working on camera and it is in the script that you must cry on a certain line and you're not getting there physically, you're not getting the physical response of tears, try using a tear stick. There are a lot of different variations of this, but basically it's a chemical or or a balm that can either be applied to the face, near the face, it can be kind of blown at you out of the frame of the camera, and the chemicals in it will react with your eyes and you'll start tearing up. Basically the same thing that happens when you're chopping onions. Another similar trick is to use Visine or another kind of eye drop to kind of help your eyes get there. But again, I'd really only recommend that for on-screen acting. Additionally, if you're performing on stage, the actual physical response of real water coming out of your eyes might be problematic. It can ruin your makeup. If you're wearing false lashes, it can detach the glue and then make it difficult to reattach the glue for subsequent scenes. And if you're in a musical and you need to be singing just a few moments later, it can be really difficult to get your body back into a place where it can sing that well. Again, it all depends on your circumstance, but take that into consideration. And this is coming from someone who has like made a career out of playing damsels in distress. Figure out why your character is crying. What does this mean for your character? Are they grieving? Are they frustrated? Are they relieved? Are they sad? Why exactly are they crying? Knowing the specifics will help you understand what to play. Also, all of those kinds of crying are very different. Get into the headspace of that character with that specific emotion in mind. Listen to what the character is saying and know the specifics of the circumstance you're playing. Take note of what makes you emotional in your real everyday life. Most actors utilize music to some extent. Music can be a very, very powerful emotional trigger for people. So if you need to get into a space quickly where you're sad, relieved, depressed, upset, whatever. Listening to music that puts you in that mood can definitely help you out. If you're in a play or a musical or some other kind of situation where you don't really have time to put in your headphones and listen to music, something that's really been personally helping me backstage is reading poetry. I usually try to find poems that really relate to what my character is going through, who they are as a person, and what their relationships are. It's just something that I notice that anytime I read poetry it really really touches me deeply. So I've been using that as a tool recently. Something that I think is really, really important 
is to not utilize personal trauma. Personal trauma can be really, really unstable. Sometimes it just hits you too hard and you're not able to continue with what you need to do. Especially if you have any kind of technical thing that you need to do right after, for example, singing or stunt work, it can be really dangerous if you're not completely physically there. There needs to be a little bit of separation so that you can continue doing your work. Personal trauma is unstable and dangerous because you don't have control over it. Additionally, it just makes you feel really icky. We all have our personal things and our own battles and demons going on and bringing that into the workplace and thinking about that to the point where you cry in front of your coworkers, it's gonna put you in a weird mood, it's gonna put you in a weird place and ultimately it might not be great for your own personal health. The only time that I really use like my own recall or experiences is if I'm having trouble connecting to a character during rehearsals or if I'm reading the script and doing work. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If you liked it or if you want more videos like this in the future, give this video a big thumbs up. I love you guys so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!